Yeah, this is uh, Nigel Jake with Willamette Week, and I'm speaking today to Kurt Huffman, who runs Chef's Table, which is uh, an organization that, that has ownership and provides management services to some of uh, many of Portland's best known restaurants. Uh, Kurt, how are you holding up in this uh, pandemic? Oh, we're doing okay. Um, it's uh, definitely been an existential experience, but it's uh, so far so good. So uh, Governor Brown has put together a restaurant advisory task force. Um, are you part of that? I am not, no. Uh, are any of the, uh, I believe you've got investments in more than 20 restaurants in Portland. Are any of the uh, chefs or owners that, that you're working with part of that group? No, I'm actually not aware of any um, any owner of an independent restaurant in all of Portland that was invited to be part of that. Uh, do you know why that is? I don't. Um, I know that um, I know there was a lot of breweries that were invited um, to be part of it, and I'm honestly just not sure what happened. Um, it seems like an oversight. Yeah. So some of the uh, some of the guidance, and I know things are shifting almost hourly uh, as we prepare to reopen the state. But some of the guidance that we saw from the governor's office earlier this week uh, talked about a, uh, a setup where restaurants would have to close at 10 p.m. and would uh, have to limit the number of people that they could serve. Uh, how, how did you feel or how did you uh, think those ideas would, would work in Portland? Um, well, some of them uh, I think are common sense. I guess I kind of bifurcate the ideas between ones that make sense and uh, and then some that are just simply unenforceable or impossible. Um, and I guess I would add a third and then some that I would consider to be unacceptable. Uh, there are three kind of ways that you would look at the, uh, the guidelines the governor has proposed so far. Could you go over those again, please? Yeah, I would, I would say there's common sense initiatives, social distancing, uh, wearing face masks, sanitizing surfaces more than regularly. Uh, those are just common sense, and and the commitment once we reopen has to be towards public safety and the safety of our staff. So we're going to go above and beyond what the state asks for. Uh, the second category I would call is just unenforceable or unrealistic, and then the third to me would just be unacceptable. Um, in the unacceptable column is where I would put the the 10 p.m. Uh, closure. Uh, we're apparently supposed to uh, stop uh, any kind of consumption, I believe, on site is how it's phrased. So essentially no more eating or drinking at all after 10. Uh, that to me is just unacceptable. Um, because I, we're going to be opening in the context of a completely new um, sit-down dining experience. Let's just talk about sit-down restaurants. Um, you're going to be going in, there's social distancing. Um, people are going to be wearing masks, and now all of a sudden, not only am I at half occupancy, which I'm okay with, uh, it's going to make it hard, but I'm at half occupancy. But now, as my guests approach the end of their meal, which they've spent good money on, um, I'm going to be forced or put into this incredibly awkward situation of telling them they need to wrap it up and head on out because, you know, the, the witching hour has arrived at 10 p.m., that's just not acceptable. I'm not going to do that. Um, we're going to push back on that. Um, it's not uh, fair to me to ask me to have my staff uh, engage people and tell them that after they've spent you know $150 on a meal, they just need to uh, wrap it up and take it to go. If they have a little bit of wine left in their bottle, I'm not going to tell them to take that home. That's not acceptable. You, uh, I think that part of part of the reason it's difficult, right, is you want to get uh, two or three turns on a table. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So for our, you know, sit-down restaurants, we're in a particularly difficult um, uh, spot here. Uh, if you look at uh, grab-and-go uh, concepts, and in our world, that would be uh, Lardo, Grasa, XLB, for instance. Uh, they're doing okay. They're set up for it. They have menus that are set up to, to go with delivery services. The physical infrastructure and the flow allows for delivery drivers to arrive and take stuff. Kitchens are more compact. Um, so we can do okay in that context. Sit down restaurants are a different world. Um, and we have much bigger kitchens, much more elaborate prep, 
uh, much more elaborate menus, much more kitchen labor that goes into providing a menu. Um, so in those restaurants, when we reopen, we're going to be desperate for guests. And let's just take uh, Ox. Ox is a 60 seat restaurant. We'll be able to open with six foot distancing with probably 24 seats. Um, and it takes about two hours to eat at Ox. So if we do a 5 p.m. Um, uh, sit, seating, five to six, the next one will be uh, seven to eight. And now all of a sudden those people that sat at eight um, have to be done, wrapped up in the parking lot at 10. I don't even have an opportunity to film the restaurant more than twice. And at half occupancy, that's effectively allowing me to seat every seat once. Yeah. And that's just going to be the death knell for sit down restaurants. We can't survive with half occupancy and super restricted hours. So have you, um, have you uh, figured out how places will restart? I would assume that your supply chains have been somewhat broken or, or at least disabled in terms of getting the kind of uh, food and fish and, and other salad, everything that you guys depend on. Yeah, the supply chains are in total disarray right now. Um, we're hoping that that uh, corrects itself by the time uh, we're allowed to open here in Portland. Um, independent of when we're allowed to open, our intent is to open around uh, August 1st. We don't really see any reason to open before that. Uh, and our real hope is that we can, um, that the supply chains will be reestablished by then. Um, the worst case scenario is that uh, not only are we at half occupancy and limited hours, but we're also have to pay a premium for all of our product, right? That's a recipe for just staying closed. So why August 1st? That's uh, if the governor's thinking about beginning reopening May 15th, why would you wait until then? I don't think there's any first mover advantage here to get open. Um, uh, in the absence of testing, uh, it, opening is, uh, is a very dangerous game of Russian roulette because people will open. Um, at some point, an employee will get sick and they'll, uh, they'll go to the hospital, they'll test positive, or a guest will call in saying, Hey, I ate at your place on Thursday night and I tested positive. And if we're confronted with a situation where we are unable to test all of the staff that work, we're faced with no other choice but to shut down. And uh, I'm not interested in having to operate in that context because that's just, you're playing a game of chicken. Uh, and as soon as somebody uh, gets sick and they will get sick, um, and even if they're asymptomatic, right, somebody will test positive. Uh, and if you can't test all of your staff, you have to shut down. 